Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you about using a NetDuma router to get bot lobbies in Warzone, or really any Call of Duty game, but the rumor started in relation to big streamers doing very unethical things in order to get easy lobbies in Warzone tournaments. Supposedly, big and small creators alike have a variety of strategies to force themselves into far easier lobbies than they should be in, perhaps well down there into the protected bracket, which is a hot topic of conversation in and of itself, so that they can rack up more kills, make better content or cheat in a sense to win big 100k tournaments. Since account swapping is far too noticeable and you can do the same with their teammates dragging you down being far too noticeable, the rumor is that they use a NetDuma router to force themselves into easier lobbies by blocking out all of the other servers. As a longtime NetDuma user and sponsor, it seems ridiculous to me, but the community rumors are still pouring out and I reached around, I got some feelers out there and I found some very unusual and maybe not so great things we got to talk about in today's video. I do want to let you know that NetDuma is a long-term sponsor of mine, so there's probably a conflict of interest there. The router does a lot of really impressive stuff. I linked it down there below in the description. You can watch a full review on it, but among the things you can do with this router is you can set a geographical barrier for your connections. For me and most other gamers, we use this to keep our lobbies inside the US only, or if you're in the UK or Canada somewhere, UK and Canada only, force a certain dedicated host that you know you have a good connection to, or reject servers over 50, 60, 70 milliseconds ping, whatever you're comfortable with. The goal for it is to make sure you don't end up playing the best people in the world in Korea and to make sure that you don't lag. The myth, however, is that you can set this for certain servers in order to force easier lobbies. And we know for a fact that Call of Duty servers are universal. Unfortunately, there's not like an easy server and a hard server and a medium server because they don't filter people like that. They're just very generic slots in a, in a server bank somewhere. So we can't get that specific. However, in theory, if you have a super high kill death ratio, you could use the NetDuma to force yourself to play in a low population server region, and there just wouldn't be enough high skill players to choose from. If there's not a lot of players in general, then there's probably not gonna be enough players anywhere close to your skill level, so you'll be getting an easier lobby than what you should be getting with normal skill-based matchmaking. At least that's the theory, and you know what? Realistically, it's not a bad one. Mathematically, it makes sense. Sense. So today I wanted to give it a shot and let me pop up my NetDuma to show you what I did. This is how my NetDuma normally looks. I have it monitoring but not filtering so I get a normal Call of Duty experience and I'm based out of Dallas, Texas. So what I'm going to do is zoom in and I'm going to change my location to Kansas City because Kansas City does have a dedicated server bank and it's one of the lowest population regions in the US that has a dedicated server. So it's going to have less players than anywhere else. And I'm going to put my ping assist up to where it'll not let me connect to any servers that are too far away or too laggy. And basically nobody outside of that tiny little circle there around Kansas City should be able to connect to me. So I can only play in that low population region. Now I did notice when I boot the game, and it shows me where all the dedicated servers are. They actually move the server bank over a little bit. I was going to screw myself up there and not be able to connect to anybody, so I decided to connect to the server bank, which isn't in Kansas City, but is still supposed to service the Midwest region for whatever reason exactly. It doesn't really matter because, if anything, that's an even lower population region, and I just make sure it's in my circle. So nobody else in the U.S. should be able to connect to me. After doing this, I disabled the filtering and played five normal games with no filtering whatsoever. I also tried to play to my average, so as far as the game was concerned, I wasn't sandbagging, rage quitting, or trying to tank my account or reverse boost or something like that. Then I turned the filter on, so I should be connecting only to that Kansas City server and played five more games only in that region. Then I used CodTracker.gg, which is the most popular stats site, plus a custom browser add-on that's currently in alpha from a guy I met today called Linestorm2 that shows you average lobby kill death ratio. I did want to give a huge shout out to Linestorm2. He was incredibly helpful with me sharing his alpha extension early, helping me pull data so I don't have to do manual entry. He's actually made a lot of interesting stuff about Warzone matchmaking and data, and I think if anybody's going to crack the code to skill-based matchmaking or cheating or whatever, it will be this guy. So shout out to him, but at the end of the, at the, end of the day, here are my 10 games. You can see the non-filtered ones at the bottom because they're the oldest, and then the filtered ones at the top, the five newest ones. And if you add all these together, what kind of results do you think you're gonna get? 
Well, I found that my normal lobbies with no attempted cheating had a kill death ratio average of 1.11, which is kind of to be expected a little bit above average because I'm a little bit above average player. However, when I turned the filtering on, it was 1.10. So absolutely no difference. That's essentially the same number. It did. It was actually far closer than I thought it would be. I thought that even random noise would give me a bigger difference than that, but not so much. Small sample size, I know, but it's, it's time consuming to try to do this the right way, especially trying to complete matches and play to your average so you don't kind of throw off the system. But uh, my best attempt at cheating resulted in absolutely nothing. So I would like to say the myth of using a net Duma in low population servers in the US to get easy lobbies is busted, but unfortunately there's some other stuff we have to talk about. You remember Linestorm 2? Well, he shared with me a lot of interesting data and screenshots from supposed cheaters, and I talked to JGod and a few other people in the community because we're all kind of trying to figure out what's going on here, and I saw a lot of not so good looking things. So perhaps my very simple test of cheating wasn't good enough. Maybe that's not the end of the mystery, and I think the solution is gonna be moving outside the US. But one thing I wanted to show you is a little bit of work that Linestorm did on a guy called Legendary117. Legendary117 is a Warzone streamer and supposedly number one in the world for kills. COD Tracker has him at number four. If you look at his stats, he's top 0.01% in everything. Insanely high kill death ratio, tons of wins, tons of playtime. Basically, he is just like the, the cream of the crop, the billionaire class of Call of Duty players. And you would think that because of this, his lobbies would be ridiculously hard. He must be a monster, right? Like when we look at his lobbies, he must be slaying out to compete with those people. But Linestorm 2 pulled a distribution of his lobbies. And when you look at his lobbies, the average is less than a 1KD. And the distribution is very, very heavily weighted on people that have less than 1KD. He's somehow getting very easy or bot lobbies almost every single time, which is unusual given his high skill level. I want to clarify in the video that I don't know Legendary 117S. I do not watch his streams. Today was the first time I have ever heard his name. This is not a call for harassment. This is not a call out for cheating or a guaranteed you did a bad. This isn't a community go, you know, burn down their building kind of thing. This is just one example of many. I was given quite a few other examples like him, but this this one is just the easiest and clearest. On top of that, I received uh, screenshots of other people proposing various cheating methods and their results. And honestly, sometimes when I watch streamers play Warzone, the enemies just look way too easy given how good the streamers are. And I get that even in a pretty good lobby, the professional streamer, especially the competitive guys, are going to be better than the average player, but they shouldn't be so much better that the other people don't really fight back. So I genuinely believe that a group of people somewhere has found a way to cheat in Warzone and they're trying their best to keep it secret to their advantage. So I'm not gonna stop looking into this. Today was kind of phase one, an exploratory phase, a letting you know of projects that I'm working on. And I'm gonna keep experimenting. Sadly, if I find a problem, I probably will not make a video about it because I don't want everybody cheating in Warzone and ruining the game. Most likely, I would send it in to somebody I know at Activision or Treyarch or uh, Raven or Infinity Ward, or just whoever, wherever it needs to go to get it uh, fixed so that it preserves the integrity of the game. And then maybe once the patch rolls out, I'll do a video about exactly what happened. But I'm gonna try to find out in the future. Some of the things that I am gonna be testing in the future is using a VPN and or a NetDuma to connect to India because supposedly, Indian gamers are not as good at Call of Duty because the game hasn't been popular in their region for very long and it's a low population region for COD players, a major population region in general, but for COD players it's a low pop region. People have recommended connecting to South Africa, people have re uh, recommended connecting to Hawaii or Oceania, and what's interesting is that Hawaii and Oceania are actually not allowed in tournaments. If you're in tournaments, you can't play from those regions because supposedly the lobbies are too e easy. I've heard that Hawaii doesn't even have skill-based matchmaking, which wouldn't make any sense, but it's a rumor. Same thing with New Zealand. Uh, I've heard rumors of accounts that have really good stats, but have somehow been hacked in a way that fools the algorithm and really pulls them down. So I have to really dig on that. And of course, you can always try to join bad players and have your friends weigh you down, but that should be a little bit more noticeable. So I'm gonna keep looking. I'm gonna try these, especially moving to other regions and see what kind of results I get. And maybe I'll uh, crack the code, but for now, 
That's the best information I got. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.